Hello and oh, yeah. welcome to the Hat Chat podcast episode 160. Wow, it's a nice round number. Yeah, that's nice. Good I'm uh, I'm one of the three hosts, uh, Chris Trot. Hi, Chris Trot. I'm Ross Hornby. And I'm Alex Smith, and we're here today to talk to you about <coughs> what is it today that you wanted to talk about? What it's is it? A variety of things. We don't have a guest today. Obviously oh, thanks had... to Ronan H for that uh, chip tune. Yes, Ronan H. Cheers, Ronan H. Chucked a chip tune our way, and it's lovely. Please send more thanks fingles to yeah. us. Uh, we love them. And we need them urgently to yeah. hatch. Urgent at, appeal. Urgent appeal for Fingles to hatch at hat-films.com. Thank you so much. You can also send some funny news and stuff there if you like. Yeah, funny news is great. Some people have sent some stuff in. Yeah. I don't think um, we're particularly funny in the news, would you say? I don't know. Again, the word funny being <laughs> used is broad. Absurd? Weird, yeah. yeah. Some weird stuff. Like somebody sent us, um, this was also a not uh, the onion. <clears throat> oh, Methodist sorry, yes. church <laughs> pastor accused of dealing crystal meth out of a parsonage. Oh, um, okay. So a Methodist Connecticut pastor. Probably not been, the first time, eh? Uh, yeah, Herb. His name's Herbert. That's so a good name. Kind of like a bit of a methy Herbert. name. I don't know. Is that what about to say? Uh, do you know anyone a bit of a Herbert. methy name? Only my nan when she'd call it. You like dirty she, Herbert. Yeah, that's what my nan would say. Yeah. Bring your hands, you dirty Herbert. Yeah. Um, the Reverend of Woodbury United Methodist Church United <laughs> Sorry <laughs> Was arrested Friday after cops were tipped off By the clergyman's alleged side gig Reminiscent of the plot of Breaking Bad Well I guess well, Is he ill? With like a religious vibe Yeah Yeah with a religious twist uh, The Walter White lookalike pastor was Looks like him What too. the hell he looks like oh, him too fuck Hang on. off Fuck off there's, Oh no there's a picture of him here Like um I think he's trying to look like him. Oh I mean, I can my show god! Just, you can this get is an idea, which what the fuck at. is the world? There is an idea there. There you go. It's just bold and yeah. He but is. like, why was he dealing meth? And he, he looks, looks like he's not like Walter White. Photograph, photograph, that's for sure. Some that's... great jokes in our live chat. Uh, oh really? Of him being a Methodist. Ah, of course, Methodist. Which church. is really funny. I thought um, I had to interject. This that. is so weird. This is like such a yeah. like. This is almost like a joke. Um, yeah, do you think he was a meth dealer before he became like? A or did reverend? he get the idea from Breaking Bad? Can anyone just become a reverend? Is that just like, I'm now a reverend? No, I think you have to. Depending on which like I'm organization controls your church, you need to adhere to their rules. So if it's a Catholic church, you have to be part of the Catholic clergy. Yeah. And, and they're like, do you deal meth? Yes, you're in. Oh, you're a dealer. Well, 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 we do need some like side <laughs> well, hustle. Obviously, not what they're after. Um, How to become a reverend online? Oh, okay. An undergraduate degree in theology is sufficient, apparently, to become a reverend. Wow. So oh. that's, that's the starting point. Get a degree in theology. Um, what do so you more study? prominent churches will expect reverends to also possess a postgraduate degree, such as a master's degree or PhD. Oh, okay. So you have to be pretty smart, smart to uh, become a reverend. So smart enough to... Well, unless you're in a small church, and then just some meth yeah. dealing would be enough. You could probably pose as a if you bought a building that was like a Methodist church, you could probably convince people that it was legit. This is <laughs> yeah, in America, I mean, I remember? Guess, like, yeah, you could probably... I, I have no idea how you like because I mean, what's the difference between a cult and a religion? Like, you know, um, uh, the type of robes you wear. It's like hard in, to say, um, but like you know, as in, the, I don't know whether there are rules <clears throat> around like just starting your own thing. Uh, I think it's very well, how wide appeal. I your mean, you could just is. say you're a role playing group. <laughs> yeah. True. Oh no, this True. is just larping. I don't know. I don't. I think you can do whatever the like, hell you like, as long as you've got like the rights to have an organised like meeting on that land. Mm. I guess if you build a building and invite people to come, then unless you're disrupting other people, I doubt anyone would give a fuck. So yeah, who knows what's going on behind closed Methodist doors? In this case, it's meth dealing. We yeah. know what's happening behind these doors, um, um, or no longer because that's yeah. a shame. Well, apparently this dude was pulled over by state troopers in Woodbury and found to be in possession of crystal meth in both rock form and in liquid form in a hypodermic needle ready just for injection for the, the gas form oh. so it was ready to go ready to just stick someone Ooh, I didn't know you could inject my Christmas apparently so um, he was allegedly slinging meth in exchange for watching gay couples engage in sexual oh, yeah. activity. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, yeah, yeah. This what? is the other side of this. I remember this. That, now. Just, that just went in there. Because I remember the headline that somebody put when they emailed it to us was something like, Priest deals meth okay. for gay cuck services or something what? like that. So he wanted that to be the That should have been in the he title. He wanted to like, be the watcher That's, or the okay. voyeur of gay couples fucking right, yeah. each other for a bit of meth. Whilst, for meth whilst on meth or like just dealing it probably both let's be honest yeah so he would give them meth so that he can watch or they'll take they'll take the it meth it just says in exchange for watching gay couples engage in sexual activity so he's there just having a little peep 
So he's not really earning a buck, he's just earning a fuck. Well, you, well I, you must well, be selling it as well the on the cut, side. Sorry. And this is why they get caught. If you if you start using your drugs as, as um, currency, then then you go to prison. If you just treat it like a business, or in this case a religion, he would have been fine. I don't know mm. if that's true. He was clearly... You can't sell meth and get away with it. Oh, well, he's got money for it. That's fine. We'll let you off with a warning. Yeah. Is that what you you think would happen? No, I just think that you don't get caught if you're oh, not. You've you know, got to wipe it clean. Using meth as a bartering tool for you're watching clearly other cucking have watching sex. that gay couple have sex. So we I feel like you're adding thing. a lot of variables to the equation. This is another photo which does look a lot more like. Now he's got the glasses on. Yeah, that does make see, sense. You can get it. For podcast listeners, he's yeah. a bold, with this um, horn rimmed glasses, man. Um, horn rimmed glasses. But he's got the he's got the same kind of shape as Walter White in that regard so I can see why they would make the comparison and also he was yeah the drugs. story as well <laughs> dealing with drugs but, <laughs> well, yeah, but the story I mean because Walter he's... White was in a desperate situation guys he had to pay bills he had mm. medical bills he was about to die he wanted to support his family it was a catalyst but he was always Walter White and five series later he's a badass who's I think just fucking doing all sorts of crazy shit he was always that guy he that just... fucking series is amazing it's an. I want to. I want to rewatch it. And also, just, apparently, Better Call re-watch. Saul is really, it is really, really good, good too. That is really good as well. So it's really well done. It's um, just a bit underrated. So you can binge watch that in a row as well, because I watched it like as the episodes were coming out. Um, nice. And that's quite. That was quite a slow one in that regard. It's slower, <clears> isn't it? yeah. But really good. I recommend both of those. Um, or just live near this guy and get like a real get life. Like a, yeah. Just get the experience. Like a Roll safari. <laughs> like a Breaking Bad safari experience. You can, yeah, you can buy real meth from a yeah. real meth there dealer. There he is. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, he says he was charged with possession of narcotics with intent to sell, possession of controlled substance, use of drug paraphernalia. Use of drug paraphernalia. So you can just like use a kind of a paraphernalia. Can you just use a paraphernalia without the extra drug in it and that's a crime or... Use of when, drug paraphernalia. Yeah, I if guess it's, if it's a banned drug, I assume. But so. I, but not, if not, using so, the yeah, drug, you're right. I mean, you, as in you, like they said use not. of drug paraphernalia. Yeah. Maybe to, you can remove drug paraphernalia if you think it's used for the use like of a crime, as in like. Yeah. But then, is it possession or is it the taking of drugs, which is illegal in this? So I don't fucking know, dude. It's American. I don't know. I'm guessing, the, I have yeah, no idea yeah. how that he was. No idea. Works, they probably like, just throw all sorts of things on. Do you yeah. think if they remade Breaking Bad now, mm-hmm. the tagline would be "Let him cook." Yeah, probably. Let I him think cook. Be, yeah. That'd be there funny. Might be a, a ad campaign. Like, yeah, I could see a big billboard with just that. Let him cook. Like, and him just with a Let pan. him cook. Yeah. But like, and then some goggles around his neck. Um, cool. Anyway, that was, yeah, that's, that's, he was that's released a good on one. 10K bail. Thanks for sending that into our email along with all the fingles. Court. So, thank you. Yeah, do send in random stories because that's basically what we're running on. Yeah. Um, it's often hard to find. With the internet being so open and big you often end up with all the same yeah, articles also just like a lot of the articles are Those just depressing the or like they're, they're not funny yeah like they're not the onion ones are normally just like outrageous or just really like or like just ho- mostly horrible things in america yeah like, just people happen. being horrible to each yeah. other yeah. And which aren't funny but they are shocking that that's it's, like it's more thing. shock humor yeah yeah yeah, yeah. which is fair um, enough i guess did you guys watch super bowl i'm not really into the super bowl but i watched the a big usher half time i watched that thing. yeah and it was like, well, there's an interesting it's not for me. dialogue to be had <laughs> about it. <laughs> That's all I'll say. I mentioned it on the other stream, but just, like, yeah. they are reaching back for like performers of the noughties, um to do these Super Bowl things now. And I think it's literally because they there aren't any modern global sensations. There are some, of course, yeah, some that aren't we, we willing said to Ed pay. Sheeran would could be good. But they have to pay to be in Super Bowl, so it takes a certain kind of person. Do they have to, how much do they pay to be in the Super Bowl? But it's like huge publicity, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exposure. You're, getting, you're paying for exposure, like a Hollywood star. Um, but yeah, like there's, there's not many, you could argue. Fuck, it says here, Usher didn't get paid to play the Super Bowl, but he did earn $52.5 million in exposure. How, how's well, that's that? a fucking exposure that how does I can that, get on board with. How, who, <laughs> Just, I don't know how they've how tallied that, that up. How does that work out? I guess if you had to have the equivalent, if you divided it by a clicks per million or something like that, or mil- yeah, uh, you right. would then go, it's a this is how much you'd have to pay in PR or marketing budget to match the amount of attention he got <clears> because of that show. Because it was also, a I imagine. big promo for his, like, um, he's got his roller skate brand and his roller skate brand and his res- <laughs> residency in Ella uh, in, in Vegas, Vegas. Yeah. so like, I imagine that probably sold a shit ton apparently of that is I want to see him live as well like, mostly that show it. isn't it 
Probably. Well, that the, the halftime shows in like mm. what, fifteen minutes or twenty minutes. Sometimes you just want to watch Michael Jackson without feeling guilty about it. We did, but there was guilt. No, I don't know. When was that? I don't know. No, I don't, was like, I don't know if anyone should feel guilty about watching Michael Jackson. I don't know. Like, um, his estate got money from us. Probably a substantial amount because those fucking tickets are expensive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we <laughs> we watched those kids roller skating around and swinging over the crowd. And they weren't kids. No, they were dressed as kids. kids. They were people in their early twenties. They were dressed as kids. They were dressed as kids. They had the weird. white glove <laughs> and really, really like but like no, but fake Usher was, well. yeah, obviously very inspired by yeah, um, yeah. Michael Jackson in his style. Vice versa um, as well. Apparently, yeah. Allegedly, Michael Jackson was also influenced a lot by Usher. Well. So they both kind of was it our song? When I mean, he must have been so late in his career. How much of his like relevant <laughs> stuff know. was influenced by Usher? Pretty sure but Usher yeah, like, got stole the glove. Yeah, but like I mean, it was very impressive. Obviously, from I'm I just sort of zooming out of just Usher and the Michael Jackson thing, which is obviously very low hanging fruit. Um, like it is, is it is wild to watch it. Like all of it, the whole start of it, the the it's it's like the amphitheater. It, it's it's like um. I, I know I talk about this a lot and it's probably a very stupid, simple view of it, but like talking about how America is our era's Rome, right? And how like it's 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 the art, sort of our empire of our era. Like they are, uh, uh, there's a lot of comparisons, right? So like, you know, like amphitheaters and coliseums and gladiatorial things, like they were always used as a big way to make the populace happy. Um, and like looking at the NFL, looking at that, that show, sorry, not the NFL, the um, Super Bowl, like, it it must have been like something like what it was like you know yeah. to be in a coliseum to have like all these people going nuts around you and like all these crazy visuals going on you know there's so much going on all the time yeah, you know there's like corporate of course that's of course what it's for, right it's, it's, yeah that's what it feels like more than anything. yeah Obviously, if you watch all the bbc the it cuts out all the ads yeah and then you have to wait oh we have to yeah don't worry we'll be waiting 10 minutes for all the ads to play and mm -hmm. then well back, if back in rome game. it would have been about making whichever leader or person who yeah. put on the show look Satisfied good so and, all the yeah. branding would have been their branding whilst yeah. now we have multiple companies yeah for sure it's well, our you, era's like version of that we had like, some gladiators and i think they recently dug up i think it was a new time team where mm -hmm. they dug up and they actually found all the old sponsor decals oh, that they, they used yeah. to put on. What, what kind of brands were they? We had McLaren. McLaren were in the holy shit. Camel cigarettes. But they were camels. covered in it, on, like the kill and everything. It's nuts. But yeah, yeah. It's, very, it's very interesting to see. Like, I think obviously, I, I, again, something else I said recently is I feel like we are in a bit of a transition period. I mean, we, we're all, everything's always in transition, but like where we are in the world right now, where we're living in, in this time, like a lot of things are happening a lot of changes and challenges to certain status quo that we've grown up in are happening and it's interesting to look at america um and see like the the phases it's going through at the moment and like the the creaks and the groans and the will this happen will that happen kind of thing and mm. yeah and then try and put that in the context of like you know another great empire that we hear a lot about in england which is rome um and uh yeah no i don't know pretty wild i mean Name a sport you hate, yeah, and then name which celebrity you love that would make you watch that sport. Okay, so okay. Um, snooker. <laughs> okay, yeah. You hate snooker. I don't hate it. watching it's it. Is so a, it's boring. Dull. Like, like, it's dull. It's dull to so watch. Boring. You've got to really, really want to watch it. But I would uh, and name a celebrity I'd like to see try and play snooker. Um, well, not necessarily try and play, but like obviously, I'm, I'm obviously riffing off the fact that like Taylor Swift was a big pull for like younger audiences, and that's what they were saying. Like brought in a new Robin one. Williams plays snooker. Robin, as in the deceased, deceased comedian, comedian actor. Yeah, yeah. I think if you had Robin Williams playing snooker, if he was fucking, just commenting, yeah, be hilarious. here we go. Whoa. <laughs> you know, I like know, I hit the ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, I think he could make it quite fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, that would be great. Like, put yeah. Robin Williams' commentary on any of the sports, and I'd watch yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, but like the Spice Girls didn't really get that. I mean, they probably did. With cut what? to Victoria oh, with Beckham, David Beckham. Yeah, every now and then they probably did. Like, it's still like a, there's still a wags they were called. Mm. So the Spice Girls are playing which sport for you? Well, no, in this regard, I'm, I'm just referencing the fact that like Be David Beckham would have been, you know, this is kind of. An equivalence of sorts, whereas it's like, oh look, it's Victoria. I'd argue Beckham there's more from, of a, but not as much star power in comparison. I'd argue that this may not be true, but football in the UK is a very different beast. In mm. that, that, people listening to Spice Girls likely watch football. I don't know. Well, that's what I mean. Like, as in, like, <laughs> or as I don't with imagine that like Swifties are necessarily NFL fans. Which sport is it? Which which sport is it? The Spice Girls are playing. Is it is it rugby? Balls. What? Bowls. Bowls, yeah. Or um, what's so the one boring. on ice? What's the one on ice called? It's, um, oh, curling. Curling. Curling, yeah. But the... Which can be <laughs> dramatic, but normally isn't uh, yeah. exciting. It's I not, think yeah, the they're rubbing the like... floor to make it more slick. Yeah, of course they are. Or not more and slick. And that looks fairly exciting. 
And yeah. when they hit that ball, it's like, yes. Nice. I want to scrub Did some it. floors. I'll just do it in my home. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah I, I think the team think coordination the... of curling is quite exciting, yeah. isn't it? When they're all yeah. like working as a little like scrubbing machine. Yeah. Like you could definitely mechanize what curling is, couldn't you? You could just create yeah. a machine that you just push down instead. <laughs> oh, slowing down a bit. Put, <laughs> just just put it got, on like, the curling, yeah. curling thing itself. Oh, yeah, don't worry about it. We've, we've done, we've fixed, you don't have to do this done anymore. It. We've got a machine that will yeah. do it every time. Learn that from Robot Wars. Yeah. It's probably done. a very popular opinion, but I don't like cricket. I, I love don't it. like cricket. I love it. No, I just find it really, it's just the, the ones that go on for ages. It's mm. like, how is that still exciting? I don't watch many sports at all. No, I if, don't know if, if we're at all. the right crowd. We're not the right crowd for it, but like, that's something that if it comes on TV, I feel like I'm going to pass out then because I've been right. mm. of how, like, just like, I'd have to be really into it. And like, I know they've, they've got like a version which is really short, which mm. is probably a lot more bearable, I'd say. But test cricket is just like, oh, okay, so we're into week four or so, whatever it is. It's like, I'm Fuck sure me, you had still friends. excited about this. I'm sure you had friends. I yeah, had friends really growing up. They used to love it. And yeah, I never used I to get it. I just, I they want, spent I want, like a I whole... want to have that joy as well. Yeah. Like they'd spend a whole like sunny afternoon just watching four and a half hours of cricket. And I'm like, why Why are you enjoying this? Like, just, like, yeah. You have to be indoctrinated from yeah. birth. But it's probably yeah. something you could have passively whilst playing a video game or something on the side. If like, you some were the other things like, I'd have passively on though rather yeah. than cricket. <laughs> something that maybe. But that's just me being a nerd. I'm not one of these people that likes passive things. I'm like, I don't, we don't, we don't watch, three, we watch football, do we? So, no, we're not a good example no. of this. But I would have the Spice Girls do ski shooting, ski. where you ski between various places, then oh. you get your rifle off your back, shoot, then ski. That again. sounds like a cool sport. Is that like an Olympic? It's games? a Winter Olympic Games yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, it's quite fun. That's pretty um, cool. Obviously, they've reduced it down to horrible boringness. Like you know, when you see like when you imagine archery and you're like, oh, fuck, yeah. it's going to be like like goddamn Robin Hood or whatever like and it's always just like it's a whole got minute every, of setting like, up yeah. they've got like a whole weight system and yeah. it's like we've taken as much as the human being out of this as we can it's now just uh, <laughs> three muscle groups and that's it there he goes uh, his weight was off he misses um, just gotta let go really yeah. I was quite um, I enjoyed the darts yeah more what recently. with the yeah, it just it was a bit more Benjamin Button. But there's also like a lot more atmosphere and stuff going on. <laughs> well, Benjamin like, Button really? throwing a fucking yard. Is that calling him Benjamin Button? Is that yeah, what he's mate? Made? He's yeah. aging backwards. He's, he's going to get younger backwards. as he gets richer. You watch. I think so. Oh yeah, oh, I'm calling him right 16. now. He's 16. That'll be yeah. He is now. Yeah. So I mean, he's he's got so much, so far to go. But yeah, that's like a little bit more interesting and and probably a bit more like I don't know. But there's people say F1's really boring, which is fair enough. I don't think people darts is that interesting. I, I love playing darts. I can't say watching darts is interesting. Um, in my opinion. I think no. we need to have a um, twisted metal style arena where you have cars which you Mad Max up to the hells, like with spikes yeah, and yeah. guns and shit, and then have a bowl, like Some destruction sort of derby style. Yeah. Full combat, full guns. Mm hmm. That would be insane to watch. I think that'd be really cool. Yeah, I think that that's, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that sounds amazing. That's I like mean, sports world. are becoming more violent, right? Well, some of them are. Some of the older ones are getting more safe, and some of the newer ones are getting more violent. Like they're talking about UFC without gloves now. Holy oh, shit. shit! Yeah, yeah. So they're looking at trying to start a league of like basically bare knuckle fighting. <laughs> well, I think bare knuckle is probably safer. I guess. I mean, I, I have no idea. I think hitting um, each other in the face is probably not particularly safe anyway. You oh do no! It. But yeah, like, I've heard um, it's not good. The worst part is well. The most savage part is when they go down and they just keep punching their fucking head. In. Oh my god, I hate like, that! And the ref fuck, doesn't fuck, come fuck, in fuck. quick it's enough. It's like whoa, like that guy's <laughs> probably dying or something. Holy shit! That's I watched one the blood. other day of like two women and one was like really choking like out the other one for <laughs> ages, and they were unconscious, and the ref didn't was like, yeah. And then the the coach had to come in and be like, "What the fuck, ref? This mm. person's almost dead from brain damage." But I think they have to do it until they tap out. But like if they're like pretty much KO'd, I mean yeah, sometimes you can't they, tap they out show knocked out. Mercy. But sometimes they just like snap their arms and stuff. It's pretty, pretty gross. <laughs> I don't think they mean to do that. But yeah, <clears> no, but, I mean, like, but they're I putting think, so much pressure and they're like, yeah. I'm not tapping out. I'm not ready to go. I, I, don't, I, I don't think it's long before we start getting combat sports. Right? You know, as oh, in like, like as sword in, play. Like reality shows. Oh reality shows where people are more physically dangerous with each other. Like, be it like, you know, some Daddy form of back. like tasing or something like that. I don't know. Something something that's not like deadly, but in a way. Because honestly, I think people are getting more and more up Tase fights. for these crazy <laughs> things. You know, like like reality shows and, and the combination of reality shows and also the willingness of the public demonstrated through social media, through videos, TikTok, things like that. The willingness of the public to do stupid things. Like, if you said to some people. This is quite squid. Like, now. like yeah it's not yeah i don't want yeah. it to be squid gaming because like there's an there's a um, there's a sort of uh dystopic sinister dystopic undertone in squid game that makes it very clever it's and very scary yes exactly i think you can still do this in a way where they're like 
hey, yeah, I'm so-and-so, I'm an ex-Royal Marine, and um, yeah, I'm going to be running around Dartmouth, trying, Dartmoor trying to not get hit by the other guys with tasers, you know, like as in, and, and, and you would have like a TV show where you're watching these teams compete against each other. There's, a, there's all sorts of like survival shows, like Alone and stuff like that, where they're oh, yeah. in fucking that's, Alaska sleeping outside. Yeah. Like that shit is hard. But you and, do wonder how, like, how much some of that is manufactured. Stuff like all of the um, what Bear Grylls shit. There's a yeah. sense of production behind yeah. this, like controlling it, and definitely, which is fair enough because obviously, yeah, like yeah. safety standards and stuff are probably so much higher now. Like they don't even like reality shows you can't drink alcohol like mm-hmm. anymore because it caused shit. Mm. And that was when the best content was out there, like Big yeah. Brother, when they can actually drink and just call each other assholes or be racist and do some stupid cases, stuff. <laughs> <laughs> or what awful. the producers were really hoping for, have sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so which they, did happen. Yeah. Um, but now they can't do shit oh, yeah, so they just have to manufacture it and be like alright now go into this booth and uh, you did this this and this say how shocked you are yeah and it's like mm. oh, okay that always takes me out of it now mm. the, well the, the fact you're imagining yeah because I was watching the, tra- the recent traitors and it's just like they're talking in real time about something that's happening around the table but they've obviously just done it and so they're just they're, going back going yeah I was really shocked we've got these notes like, here from the like, producer those pull me so far out of the I don't know it, it takes the yeah but then if you don't th- if you just Brain dead, watch it. Don't think about those things. It's fine, which is fine. You mean get high as balls? Is what you're saying? Sure. No, that, that wouldn't be enough for me to watch that <laughs> But I just that feel stuff. like it's so boring. But I think traitors, it's, it's the best just, thing about traitors so is the round table. Out. That's it. How is it not? It's so played out. How are people still interested? It blows my mind. Well, it's like people watching board games. I suppose it's like because it's like a mystery thing. And it's it's, quite it's never ending. Seeing how that right? plays. Like people are always interested in people. Yeah. I, I seeing guess, their okay. strategy on how they're going to convince that they're not a traitor or that so and so should go or how I think they it's make also like just how much you consume in your lifetime right mm. like someone younger than you hasn't consumed as much reality TV and so it's always going to be slightly newer sorry to... I completely understand that yeah I right. understand like a new audience or a new group of people coming to it you know it's like when our parents discovered Facebook God help us all and like you know they've come into it they do their thing I understand that mm. what I'm surprised at is how I get I guess yeah you're right I'm imagining a person who's personality or mind is across many like formats so for me like film tv games board games role play they all are part of like the the spectrum of interactable or enjoyable media or whatever you missed out the sex dungeon bit which sex like... dungeon bits part of each of those um but yeah. like basically for me like these social deduction things they're like i've se- originally i guess i played them first in like secondary school for like like werewolf you know mm-hmm. like mafia or some people call it where you're just playing the actual sedu- like seduction game deduction game <laughs> yeah. um and that was really exciting and like i get i get like the i get the kernel exactly i get the kernel of why because like you know deceiving <clears throat> and working out who's deceiving each other is is exciting um some somehow in your brain mm. um and then you know oh games come along things like among us you know there were games before yeah. among us that i'd played where i kind of felt like oh among us yeah i've seen this format before but i get why it was successful and then like maybe like one or two versions of this <laughs> traitors thing yeah. i just feel like it's kind of lazy first of all it's lazy to see them make shows like that i mm. think like it, it but it's, simplicity wins doesn't it but at think, the moment but it what does. makes those more in that format it, more it wins for certain it wins, wins for certain audiences it clearly yeah. doesn't win for me because <laughs> in traitors i i actually just don't even watch what, want to watch any of it apart from the round table stuff the other stuff of them doing activity stuff I but why do you like that like what's because the... it's the mystery of like and obviously like they always kind of trip someone just blames someone or like oh it's, it's probably this person they don't fucking know and then you've got the trait you know who the traitors are so you can see with them kind of scheming stuff and it's like that's quite so interesting. do you enjoy trying to work out who it is or do you enjoy it's the drama the of them all like the, the drama. interaction because obviously right. it, it's i don't di- like it's different drama. From, it's different I think from that's the thing. it's different from among us where it's yeah, like yeah. or like anything that's like repeatable or like they, these guys have all been chosen for a show that they don't yeah. they don't want to fucking leave that show mm-hmm. so there's genuine emotion about behind like oh mm-hmm. i don't want to get kicked out for like whatever mm-hmm. and you want to stay in the game for as long as possible so you are mm-hmm. seeing a bit more of a genuine reaction mm-hmm. obviously yeah there's manufactured bits you know they talk about it in, in talking heads and whatever which is yeah does pull you out of it but i think that element is quite interesting and makes mm-hmm. it quite fun you can't really repeat that just in a let's do a round of board games it's like, oh, I'm, I'm out i'm out that's fair enough but they're out they're like actually emotional about it and like I was like, oh shit! And that was my, that was my good friend. I made ma- like a mate in here for two weeks. Yeah, but you, how can you believe anything they say? Well, I don't know, but like, it's just like there's, you can know there's more at stake because they've taken time out of their jobs to go to a place, get involved in a thing. They probably had to whittle down from like two, three hundred people or whatever. <clears throat> so they genuinely want to stay in there. Yeah, I think makes there it, is that a human makes element that more to interesting. It. I think. Like, I don't think you can be totally acting the whole time. I think there is a level of like the way they structure it around these people competing against each other there is 
it's hard not to be competitive and and take it to heart i imagine like we play games and we take things to heart like yeah. when we die it's like you played these games for like all your life why does a death in a game that doesn't make any difference mm. to anything affect you in that way emotionally? Like, or like the does. people that you were trusting or maybe your fellow yeah. traitors have suddenly chosen you and it's like, oh, fuck. Like, but what ca- the caring about something just or make, making yourself feel about something is about investment, right? Like, as in the reason, you, the things you just described about like a game, something happening in a game or something happening in a story or something, right? Yeah. Like all those things, the, the, the amount you feel is about invest, how much you've invested in the first place and how much you, you know, like be, usually an emotional investment. I'm not talking about monetary investment. I'm talking about, you know, anything. It's like, pets you know you invest a huge amount of emotion into them and then when things go bad with them it's incredibly hurtful Mm. like i think for me i'm not interested in and this is just me and i think this is probably it identifies why perhaps these things don't resonate with me as much is because i'm not interested in investing in these people like as in because like i think it's just i don't know like i don't know it just for me like i i think it's also just like drama for me just gives me anxiety um like i, I don't like uh, dissonance or like discord you know I, like it, it makes me uncomfortable to see people like poorly communicating or like poorly like, like not yeah, getting, getting on like, like, like mm. i just it just makes me feel like <laughs> ah you know rather I mean, than I'm like not, oh my like god it. you know i'm like I, I, I don't really watch these shows anyway but i was just yeah trying to find context as to why you do watch it mm. and like get the fun yeah yeah it. i think i can understand that about like the whole like you get a you get an emo- a real emotional reaction that you wouldn't get from an actor because mm. like an actor well, is you know these recreating people, that reaction yeah, rather genuinely than, want to win because yeah. they're invested and there's money involved in yeah. well, there's like a pretty big like, 120 yeah. grand or something so there's, mm-hmm. mon- there's good money involved yeah, you win yeah. <clears throat> so people are playing their own little games and stuff yeah um and then someone will just be like yeah. oh i think you're suspicious just because you looked away when they said this it's like yeah. the fuck really and yeah. you're like yeah me too it's like, oh fucking hell that's really your decision you're pretty and, sus yeah, sometimes it's just interesting to watch stupid people as well <laughs> no, but they're everywhere I mean? thing is I they know, are yeah. already everywhere it, it's, oh, there's like, always a, and I think that's what makes some of these shows these reality <laughs> shows in general popular like probably the only way is Essex or whatever it's just that sometimes you want to feel better because these are the real these are stupid people <laughs> <laughs> but, they're and they're, but, but they're also going to probably have a better life than yeah, but that's, like uh, everybody watching <clears> like, you can't compare your life it's not about that it's about the fact that like god like there's just this escapism element of like but you're escaping from a worse stupid, life than they'll walk in like as in like yeah, for me it's like a false net like like upside it's almost like oh yeah they are you're right they are dumb but like at the same time they're kind of probably for me life is about like experiencing things and like tr- living as much as i can uh, within my means not like i'm not asking to ha- own like you know a fleet of ferraris and what all these like you know weird celebrities and radio presenters and stuff do but like I think I'm just like, oh, fuck me. That person is a total idiot. Yeah. And their little idiot brain is going to sail through this existence and see and experience probably quite amazing things. And I feel some people get more from certain things than others. And, yeah. and I just feel like there's a cosmic injustice that these but people just, get these things and you don't. And you have to I use know, them as a way to escape from how bad you feel. I know, but you're just describing that's jealousy. Though. Fuck. It's not it jealousy. Matter, it's, it is, it's, though. You've lost it's, it's, the it's, definition. It's, 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 it's dislike of the order of things. It's not, it's not, I'm not jealous of being that stupid. Because they've earned it in that way, sure. But, like, but it's not it about matter. earning. But it's, it's even divorced from earning because you can earn money in loads of different ways. Like yeah, yeah. Saying they haven't earned it, becoming a reality star can be a great way to you make money it's not yeah. about earning it's about making you know mm-hmm. I, I, and i'm st- i don't like that you know and, and i think it just it just builds into a whole system of things that i revile mm. and, it, and and i so i can never really like experience it without that sort of somewhat like fuck this is this is where we are though mm-hmm. you know like uh, and, and that's just because i'm not <clears throat> I, I'm take things too seriously or I, I'm not resilient enough you know like I'm not saying that that's the world's fault that's just the way that my particular mm. lens sees it you know and um, it's jealousy yeah. 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 it's jealousy but I don't watch, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, I mean, yeah, yeah I mean only ways I can that stuff is yeah. really trash TV I don't watch that but like no, no, but, but yeah. then at the same time I do watch yeah. The Apprentice which is also awful in terms of the people on there are really stupid but I'm yeah. not sure if they're stupid or they're just being led down a path by a producer to do stupid things but my god some of the mistakes they make and like the calculations are always wrong and like ugh, it's just like you are watching stupid people but it's just like god like how do they get this opportunity and then you, you do kind of compare like oh I could, I could do that yeah I mean I wouldn't want to fucking go on that show but like I guess it makes you feel better because you're just like yeah I could fucking do that challenge that's so easy like why do they design it with these colours like what's that design and it's just like but then I think they just do that for the entertainment of it which is well, also like as a producer we would be like well it needs to be entertaining 
the the how easy it is to choke when you're in that scenario as well. Like people yeah, don't yeah. realize what it's like. On like TV. when Simon Clark did that um, mastermind thing, mm. and people were choking on silly questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like they're all so spot. easy. You're just on the spot. Yeah. yeah, you can be the smartest, most quick thinking person in the world on the wrong day. You yeah. get yeah. fucked. Yeah, and yeah, you, you have some yeah. pressure put on you, and it's yeah. like, well, everyone else is doing shit, really? but like yeah. Yeah. I've sat and watched these shows all the time. <laughs> I can understand, and then your yeah. brain just. For Farts. sure, for yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. so. Oh, it should have been kilograms, not grams, guys. Yeah. Oh, we've only got one cake. Oh, fuck. Well, I guess we'll just, we can't go back to the shop because the producers won't let us. It's like... You can be super skilled. It's like <laughs> training a dog, right? Not to compare people to dogs, but uh, <laughs> when you when you train a dog in one environment, they get really good at that environment. You yeah. take them outside, suddenly all that training goes out the window. Yeah, it's, different it's like yeah. taking a chef that's like really good at their job in their scenario with that kind of work environment that they had mm -hmm. and then you put them on a show where there's cameras and start and stopping and then a judge it's like they're not they weren't trained to cook in front of that or yeah, different that. yeah different pressures so <coughs> silly prick put himself on tv though didn't they so we can sling all the vegetables we like at them this is it yeah what yeah basically and they had the uh it's just another it's just a, they could win. another fucking you know walk through the middle of the town centre to the gallows as all of us peasants yeah. gather around and hurl our vegetables at them because our are. life They're sucks doing stupid but they're things. more stupid yeah. than us and we haven't progressed <laughs> at all but uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's very much like that in, in that regard because yeah. it's just like we want to see stupid people doing dumb things on TV we haven't really evolved look at jackass like, well I want to see combat sports they well, yeah, exactly. you want to see combat sports <laughs> um, no I don't this is why pro wrestling's so good. Yeah. It's got a bit of both. Theater. It's got I mean, theater. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's got the violence without people like losing mm. limbs and shit. Mm. And it's enough to be like, <laughs> yeah, without, e like, everyone's got their own taste of theater, isn't it, really? Like, you know, the theater may come from wrestling, the theater may come from actual, very dry historical theater, as not many people enjoy, um, musical theater. And yeah. then, you know, like going to watch Wicked is yeah. like the same kind of thing. No, definitely there's always going to be an element of live performative like art isn't there there's, it's just very interesting for human beings to watch yeah. i guess yeah reality is the twist on the fact that usually that performative art is prepared or or written whilst some of the reality can be organic and exciting yeah i think it's the organic element mm. it's like you're trying to coax out um something from a real human mm -hmm. and it's not like they're in on it it's like no they're being manipulated for yeah. tv for your benefit which is mm. quite dystopic really the last reality show i watched was this one where they got dropped in alaska right and oh, it yeah. was quite clever well it wasn't clever some bits were really shit so they had to split up into like four teams but the way they did it was they just like had like the 20 like contestants and they just went you now need to split into four teams and they were just like oh fuck and they're all like different like they're quite good they're all quite like experts in different things in the outdoors you know some of them are good at hunting some of them are good at like bushcrafting some of them have knowledge about fish mushrooms all this sort of stuff right and then they just have to join in an instant with like the people next to them and you know it's a lot like school yeah, yeah. like gym class where you're just like yeah us and then but the problem is in that moment they've usually either fucked or, or not or succeeded because right. like the people that they happen to pull together into their group, if they've got the right skill set, they're, they're going to win. But it was really clever. They, they divided the camps using a river in the middle, and then they had to build, like, rafts and stuff. Oh, shit. But it's okay. constantly wet. It's one of the wettest places in the Christ. world. Yeah. And um, it gets down to, like, sub-zero temperatures at night and then gets about above 10 in the day. It's just miserable. It's like walking yeah. around right now. Imagine just doing survival outside and you've got to build but your own shelter. Way colder. Just right now. Misery, yeah. Um, and that was very interesting. But by about day three or four, when they all started looking like they were about to die, there was a moment when they all suddenly started being a bit more chipper again. And you're like, they definitely fed them. Cause like they, oh, they, yeah, they yeah. were like yeah, eating yeah. like mussels they were finding on, on the river. They were just walking Holy up and fuck. down. But is it, like, there'll be rules based on yeah. just, you can't, you can't starve people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Like two but... or three people, like one of the guys who was like easily one of the lead like contestants, you know, really, really competent fit guy. And, um, he just didn't get enough food in him and his metabolism was basically too high he was too like big and muscly so just losing he just muscle. fucking collapsed and they had to take him out of the helicopter oh, you know like just because he didn't get enough food yeah. and um that's what they wanted though that's the show they want yeah yeah, yeah. but it was pretty wild like that that to me was like this is pretty real mm. you know it seems like stupid almost but i think you need a little bit of stupid for it to be really exciting so, yeah. um because otherwise it feels <clears throat> too insulated it feels too yeah. unreal you know um Anyway, we should make our own reality TV shows, but not us. I don't want to compete, all right? 
We're gonna die. Well, then where's the where's the fun? We'll get other people to compete, Trot. Oh right, and we'll we're take... like we're the judges. Yeah, we're the game makers. What would the scenario be? Um, well, we'd wear, we'd wear these weird jeweled animal masks. Um, and, and people are furniture. Right. Yeah, and people are furniture. In a dystopic world. Really sexy furniture. Where we could be able to kill each other We have money. a bridge, and then mm -hmm. they have to, like, go onto the next piece, but it could break. Mm. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah, I think that show was called... Is it Outlast? Outlast, or, yeah. Yeah, I think it was Outlast. Yeah. Outlast? Yeah, it's yeah. Quite close to that horror game that we played, Outlast Trials. Yeah, which yeah. Which is very similar. Where they so, so yeah, the, the, the notion of that Alaska one is if you're the last team left, you have to win as a team. Um, right. So they were forcing them to make allegiances, and a couple of times, like people switched teams and stuff. Right. One time, one guy stole all of his team's sleeping bags and oh, took right. them to another team to like to win them over. To get to win them over. So you do like drama. But like, but dude, it's drama. not drama. It's, it's like people will die at night. That's real drama. That's you know, drama, like, like they, that's still drama. It's not like, oh, he I don't stole know, sleeping bags. I always lit up at the idea of it. Because I, I guess when I there's real danger between people, not like just physical. Perhaps, <laughs> perhaps yeah. reality TV isn't extreme enough for me. I think that's what I, I think, probably... I think you want real people to get hurt. I think it needs to escalate like when beyond can, familiar concepts. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's just there's a little bit of drama involved. That was, that was, that was definitely a mistake. I kind of wanted to like open it and like flick it out mm. but instead it just ended up right yeah, next yeah. to his face and then just I cracked it, it into his eye but it, you fucking loved it though it was, it was yeah. I mean, <laughs> you and, really and enjoyed it and the close up it. we got of it and just popping balloons well, the face. close up of when the water just hits the inside <coughs> of your nose and then cascades up and around your eye like, like the curling of a wave it was like a Davidoff advert <laughs> just make peace with the idea that you fucking love it. I love drama. You, you love want more. You know, you love I love drama. Threat. I'm jealous of reality threat. TV show stars. You love suffering. Idiots aren't like doing well for themselves. I don't like idiots to do well for themselves. Events, yes. You like people throwing up? Huh? You like people throwing up? Throwing up is hilarious. Yeah. It is hilarious. Yeah. Come on. Ball hits. The reason I love throwing up so much is because more often than not, the person has done it to themselves. And that is something that you can laugh at. Jesus. Because it's just like, look at what you've done. What about you a can of fizzy to the eye? Is that, did I no, deserve that? Was, that? I, no, I've already said that was a mistake. <laughs> but right. you fucking loved it. So why? Why did I love it? Yeah. Because you like suffering. Oh, God. Yeah. Maybe I'm a, a sadist, <laughs> is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's just therapy. That's all this is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just identifying these things isn't going to improve me, though. It's just gonna. <laughs> we're just. Gonna, it's gonna quant peace with it, it's, it's nice. gonna quantify me. Well, it's not. It's almost bad that I'm making peace with it. You know, like yeah, yeah. You're right. But I'm now just... you can find really good shows to watch. Yeah, I, I know exactly what I need to scratch my itch, and yeah. I'm less of a danger to the public. Exactly. Right. Okay. Yeah. No, that's, that does make quite a lot of sense, actually. Um, <laughs> so there's got to be some weird shows online somewhere. Maybe Japan. Maybe Insect fighting. That was always good. Yeah. I hate insect fights. No, I, uh, I bug mean, fights was awful. We've, I think we've, we've, this is well. It's just around. they would never meet each other in the wild. You just shoved them into a little yeah, cage. Yeah, and they and don't know what's going fight. on. No, That's exactly. The thing. It's like, of course, they're going to just fight to the death. A, a little bug. That's yeah. brutal. That's not the combative sport element is like no these these people elected themselves exactly. to be in it exactly. Mm. Like I think that's the important thing. Oh, of it's course, like, if they choose to do those things. Then yeah. But it's, at the same time, you can be put into a pressure oh yeah you scenario. can be, you can be the victim of socioeconomic pressure but there's only so much of that you can need to allow for to be reasonable otherwise yeah. you wouldn't be, make any decisions at all of course there's a there's a barrier yeah, but you're right <laughs> to consider that yes yeah but if you're you know if you're going if you're already brother. as smart as you try you already would have thought about that like you had so I'm, I'm just hoping that all of our listeners are as smart as you fingers crossed don't enter into <laughs> outlast in alaska yeah, yeah don't know what you're doing um right you got anything to finish us up there ross oh i don't know there's a couple of stories there's a weird one which I saw this video the other day actually, which was just, I guess it just highlights just the clumsiness of American police officers. This is in oh, Florida, no. so there we go. Well, <clears throat> an acorn fell on his car and he started thinking some, he thought someone shot him. And so he pulled out his gun and started firing at the car. Oh my God. So there's shots fired, shots fired. <laughs> Shooting the car, an acorn fell on it. Oh. That's how fucking scary it must be to live in America. That there are, These are the guys who are supposed to protect you. He's, yeah. he, luckily he has um, fucking resigned. Hell. Probably with his head probably in his hand, he's like, like, I'm such a moron. Yeah, I mean, like, well, it probably just goes to show. Like, just give him like wow, a week's pretty... training and say, yeah, here's a gun, here's a badge, go have fun. I, well, it's, it's, it's I, I can't imagine that is all they do. No, but it just gives the impression. An acorn <laughs> fell on, I mean, but then obviously that's the skitch. You're right, you're right. Exactly, has a gun. So exactly. everyone's just like, oh, fuck. There was no if like... you're in a situation where there may be a chance you're going to be shot and you yeah. hear something that may sound like a gunshot. Well, then you would it's... duck and hide. Yeah, you would get down. But he fucking got his gun out, emptied a fucking bag into a car, which had somebody handcuffed in the back of it. 22 year old if there's an if that's your instinct and yeah. not your rational thinking then there's a problem yeah, yeah. But that's like that yeah that's pretty much where that story went and he doesn't have the job anymore so that's good 
Yeah. Uh, the other one was just a weird one, which was uh, Delta Flight returned to shiphole because maggots were falling on passengers from overhead. Ugh. Turned out someone left a... Uh, oh, God, here it is. Um, a suitcase containing rotten fish was in the overhead... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> overhead carrier. Nothing to declare. Jesus Christ. <laughs> no rotting good. fish with maggots. Just like, That's so what horrible. Fuck? What the hell's above me? I'm <laughs> raining uh. maggots. And they're like... <laughs> Oh so my neatest. god! So unbelievably Christ, bad. That's How? <laughs> who had rotten fish Did in their luggage? Did they just bring it on? You think? Do you think they just brought it on? <coughs> well, I don't know. If it's rotting, surely it's been rotting for a it while. It would stink. It would smell. That's maybe. your hand luggage. That's yeah, like the yeah, shit yeah, that's that you check. Luggage, yeah. like, I'm gonna put my passport and stuff in you there. You would smell that shit like going through customs. They'd be like, "What the fuck's that smell?" Or also, the scanner. It goes through security. Yeah. Was it wrapped in something? Maybe or like. Ah! Cut, cut, cut. But the maggots got out. Ugh. Oh, yeah, it was raining maggots and they had to turn the plane around. Uh, there's multiple uh, steps. They basically there, got though. to Manchester and turned around back to Amsterdam. You think they would land in Manchester or something? I don't know. I don't know what the logic no, is. No, they were Dutch maggots. The maggots didn't have a passport. Yeah, the maggots couldn't be transferred. Back. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, back sir. You're not people. coming in. Brexit means Brexit. Yeah. We maggots. don't want any foreign maggots. Only English That's maggots coming in here. English gross. maggots. Uh, only English, really English maggots. All right. And some Welsh maggots. And some Nor Nor <laughs> Well, you know what I mean. It's complicated. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but UK, yeah, that's, those are the weird stories that I saw. Um, other than that, there were some just conspiracy theories about Taylor Swift being a Pentagon asset. Right, yeah, I did <laughs> so hear about that. I don't that. really know what the grounding behind that is. She could be is. an alien. What? She's got alien-esque Why? features. She so. what, what, how? What? Well, she's quite very symmetrical. Very symmetrical. <laughs> and I think that like is crafted a, in an yeah, AI. Too well crafted. Yeah. I think it's perfectly reasonable to be skeptical of powerful people. Yeah. You've got I to mean, look for the double lids on the eyelids. Because I think they wasn't there worried that she would sway the votes because she's just got, you know, such a large audience. I don't think, by the way, I don't think that Taylor Swift is a, a Biden ass. I mean, a she psyop. is. She she's is. A I mean, it wasn't a planned psyop. It's it's one of the many forces of the culture NFL. that go in favor of certain political movements. The NFL have Obviously, dropped her billions is... and billions and billions. And then she's just had to partner up with whichever quarterback is in the team at the time. And bam. Yeah. Oh shit! I don't know. I mean, uh, Biden needs all the help he can get. So um, you know, Ooh, yeah. to stop America falling apart. Because I mean, like, honestly, what on earth is going to uh, happen if, if yeah. the other one gets in? You know. I mean, uh, obviously, people always comment. Well, why we comment on American politics? But like, our politics I think is people well. realise all of our yeah. politics is dog shit right now, and we're all just super kind of dog shit. Just weird it's powers. like reality TV. We're trying to look for the other thing that's, mm. that feels worse than us. Yeah, to it make just, us it's, feel it's better. Thing for a little country with like 250 million people. Mm -hmm. Those are the two options. That's pretty shit, isn't it? And we've got, well, we didn't get to choose ours. No, we didn't. We had f a couple of you candidates. Hear that Rishi said that he was an elected candidate as well the Ooh. other day. Democratically. Um, no, he called it uh, no, I, democratically instated, I think it is. Or something uh, like instated, that. that makes sense. Something like that. Like, as in, it was through the established routes that he was made prime minister yeah. rather than elected he has been inst <coughs> installed or some but shit i think he, he misworded it uh, did he but he said oh, just yeah. elected, elected yeah. yeah it's all a bunch of toss isn't it we've all got yeah. to just smile and eat the shit and watch combat wrestling and no. watch combat Full wrestling combat. to get over it all do i just want to see people I die again on no tv love i can't anime. watch wrestling without somebody smashing copious um how like those bulbs over the oh, back yeah. oh, yeah, tubes. Those, those <laughs> tubes i'm a tube smashing wrestler to be honest with you i have to go to very hastily um organized events because like, they cannot get insurance for any didn't of it didn't racka racka do a load of videos on they're them, really they smashed good at a load it. of fucking they're like, tubes on their back and then rolled around on it i stuff. remember watching them early on and thinking this is so <clears throat> reckless and dangerous. I think some of it was real. Yeah, it's some all like real. Back, backyard wrestling. It's all real, <clears throat> and like they put their bodies on the line for sure. But they are also extremely good at like putting that together yeah. and making it look way more visceral. And they made a banging film. And they Fair made a banging film. Fair play They're doing very well. We say we met him, one of them. Yeah, one we met them both. Well, we only met the one racker. They were both there. No, no, was it just one? It was just one there. No, I remember two of them, but I remember them. Are they twins? Oh, yeah. I'm 90% sure one of them makes. He said the other one didn't. I think we met them twice. Oh, I remember really? meeting one of them and two of them. Oh, shit. When was that? Oh, I don't we remember. Did that. The we did the ghost recon thing. Ago. There was, there was only one, one there. Yeah. I thought we met them in LA one time as well. I thought I think we were at something when they were there. Maybe, maybe. But yeah, we met one of them at the uh, uh, military. At the thing, ghost, the recon, ghost recon. When thing. we had an awkward interaction with um, Punisher. What's his name? The Punisher, the guy who plays Punisher. I wasn't that him. awkward? No, it wasn't. We didn't really speak to him. He was expecting a photo. Joe Bernenthal. What did we get? John Bernthal. John Berenthal. Baron, Baron 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 John Bilderbear. 
was he expecting something else? What was he expecting? Well, it just looked like he just sat down and we were like posing for the camera and then oh, yeah. it was actually being filmed and we were like, oh, so uh, there wasn't like really a conversation. Uh, yeah, we, I think we just have terrible interactions with celebrities when that happens. It's just weird to try and cram those things together, to be honest. I yeah, went in knowing enough. that he didn't want to be there meeting yeah. us. Yeah, that's it. They're just there to tick the ticker box, yeah. get paid, check and move on. Um, you know, they make another fucking Planet of the Apes film. I saw the trailer for it, yeah. Wait till they're very popular, apparently. Apparently so. I guess kids probably love it. Apparently they're really good. Yeah. Like the most recent ones have been very oh, good. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Terrible just, for Smith. Not really Smith my though. thing, but you hate mm. humanoid yeah. apes. <laughs> it yeah, plays the monkeys, it. man. They're just a bit scary, oh. aren't they? They're fucking scary. I mean, actually, if Planet of the Apes was real. I know. Do you scared me in the day? I think what? it's a dream story. Okay. Are you prepared for a dream story? No, he's story? fine with dream stories these days. He's the main purveyor of sure. It was really sure. The Chris Trott hates dream story space. It was like just four it's, years it's something that's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to think about this dream every time I get on a flight. Right. right. And it was literally like, it was just, I felt the turbulence. Oh, so and I felt so. like I was there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Looked out the window, plane going across. Another plane. Another plane going across. And so we dipped. And then we just kept going down. I was just preparing for death and I just accepted death. <laughs> and I had this kind of really visceral, real moment of like, I'm, this is it. I'm, okay. I'm was it die. peaceful? In a way. Okay, so you've already experienced what it's like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's quite nice. <laughs> Fuck's sake. But now I feel like I'm going to picture... It was so realistic. It's like I had an Apple Vision Pro on. Or a Meta Quest 3. Which is way cheaper, yeah. Way cheaper. I um, I actually saw a, what I thought was an anti-air rocket launched at my plane when I was leaving Mexico City. <laughs> I told you about this, didn't I? I don't think you did. I'm not I you know. No, Anti- what the fuck? Air- Honestly, would you see something go? To, yeah, I saw a thing go, and then it curled back round, spiraled, and went <laughs> up towards the right hand wing of my Holy aircraft. Shit. I swear I told you about this. So obviously, Wait, is I'm this still real here. or a dream? No, no, this is real. So when I was leaving Mexico City last year, <laughs> what the fuck? Right, we were taking off, and as as with a lot of places, a lot of cities, when the airport is usually out on the outskirts of the city, right? Yes. And also on the outskirts of the city are like the trash heaps, the waste disposal services, yeah. and also just like in places like Mexico City, like random lots of empty land that you can rent or own if you want you know they're literally just fenced off squares yeah. of land um of you know that are only probably a few hundred meters by a few hundred meters and this one looks like somebody was using it for flying model aircraft right and i looked down so so which was crazy because <laughs> we, we were airport. like right next to an airport which is a, is yeah. a classic exclusion zone for flying that mm. kind of thing um and he it was literally a couple you know less than a half a mile beyond the airport I saw this field we must have been even about five six hundred feet off the ground you know we were real close to I could still just about see faces you know and there was these two guys and I was watching looking down I was like oh what are they up to oh this is kind of cool like seeing all the outskirts of the city and stuff and I was looking out my window and um I just see this classic just smoky ass rocket motor start just and this thing goes shooting off and I'm like shit is that what is that is that and at first of all i thought it was either a remote control plane which i've flown a lot of in the past or um one of those remote like you know those home rockets you can get like the, the sort of you know yeah, yeah, about yeah, yeah. three foot like tall bottled rocket but think. then it seemed like they had control of it because it was shooting off in one direction then it turned oh and then it started gaining altitude in a spiral and i was like for a second i was like ha, this looks just like those videos i've seen on combat footage of people using anti-air missiles and i'm like it's not an anti-air missile, is it? And you're like, and I was like, well, I mean, Mexico City is a lot safer than I think a lot of people think it is. You can, most European tourists, American tourists could easily go to Mexico City, don't make stupid decisions, and you'll have a fine time. You can walk about like in the daytime. Like most places, right? Yeah, you can walk about in the daytime of most parts of Mexico City with headphones in, with your phone out, you know, like, it's it's not like super dangerous so i was like in my head i'm like nobody's gonna have a fucking anti-air missile i mean it is mexico and they you know but nobody's just gonna be randomly launching these things so i was just like guess i'll just wait because my eyes <laughs> told me that looked like a real missile so you didn't but, yeah you didn't scream out you didn't say hey I mean, guys a missile. You do? a missile it's For about a... to hit the fucking fuselage like <laughs> i saw <laughs> it i saw it turn the penny dropped to my head and, and then like literally just my heart my, my stomach was in my chest for about oh, 30 seconds because i was like impact. either we climb yeah. out of this or we get hit on the right yeah. wing and we're almost certainly going down. So I just waited for 30 seconds, similar to you, just you like- You didn't jump over your loved ones. But I didn't feel at peace. I was like, fuck, fuck, yeah. fuck. In my head, I was just like- Well, mine was a dream. Yeah. Different scenario. But no, I did. I literally, I, and I still don't <laughs> so point, I think what it was is a rocket- dream was calm. A rocket powered like 
jet, like remote control jet thing, right? I think that's what it was because it was definitely using this a rocket. It's crazy yeah. to light one of those in a. I know, right next to as a plane was taken. I know, I know. It just it's sucked into a jet somewhere. But it is, you know, Mexico. So, like, you know, the, you the rules life. are a bit looser. Um, there was another branch in that multiverse where that was a missile. Often, and often, they, I think this, this time they just missed you. Yeah. Mm. Often, I think this. I think that, the, you know, that that could be a lot of what your existence is because you know you're the only one that ever knows whether you've died or you're alive right in terms of like well you wouldn't really know if you died because if you died and you would branched off to a different reality so like you say i i thought you know i think we talked about this before yeah i often thought about this as a teenager your yeah. truman show was my branches of reality right. show yeah, where i was okay. like what if all the times i did nearly die yeah in that reality i did in fact get hit by that bus i didn't hesitate see this story holds up this theory holds up until old age and then yeah what, then absolutely what exactly and i think that's the you wisdom. just keep surviving exactly and you know and how worse <laughs> things happen to you as you get older you know you're just like well i mean it's not that great <laughs> you know like life but you're really like, old now yeah i think i think like you know as you get older you get life prepares you for being all right with it ending hopefully yeah I think um so. uh, or we're all just inside a really really advanced like you know, hundreds, hundreds of years in the future. Simulation. Apple Vision Pros. We are just living through. <laughs> you don't have to keep saying. Are you saying so, that? For, I'm just saying that as a reference point. SEO, yeah. And SEO, it always works. But like West three. As a reference point. Yeah. They've. We are living our life through. Yeah. We're playing. We're an avatar. Because it's like our lives are so boring and mundane. Because everything's cured. Well, yeah. Because everyone's just sitting in a box because no one can afford anything. So they're all just sat in chambers, just put, putting the helmet on, living a real life through drip feed and just fucking enjoying. Feeling life real pain. Yeah. So what we think is miserable is actually paradise. Because we I think, that, um, that humanity. Well, yeah, possibly. It's all about it's all a matter of perspective, isn't it? <clears throat> it really is about perspective. Um, mm. And obviously, as it's impossible to see other people's perspectives, you can you make of that what you Apparently, will. the trick is to heavily overdose on LSD. Heavily. And um, experience the entire timeline of the universe. That seems like... Apparently... <sighs> well, as soon as I draw the rest of the owl. It always works with LSD. Uh, I can get you Are you talking you about the, hero you're you're talking about the heroic some? dose? Should yeah. we try some and go on the stream? I'm not sure I'm capable of doing uh, you like in You basically watch yourself go through your entire timeline yeah. and then you become the universe for what feels like eons and then someone watched the, the whole Earth be reformed again. Yeah, but like, the point obviously just, this is just something your brain is doing to you. But it's incredible right? that your but brain's have you seen capable. Yeah, have you seen that clip of yeah. them handing, like, giving LSD to soldiers and then just like giving them a load of weapons and just sending them out and seeing what happens? Then they all start like hugging and dancing. Yeah, I don't think they, yeah, but <laughs> they, they had RPGs and like, yeah. uh, it's yeah. just yeah. a really, hell. Yeah. they obviously didn't know what what effect it would have and yeah. that's quite, yeah, let's give it to some soldiers and see that's what That's when they were thinking about using it as a weapon, I think. <coughs> they were thinking yeah. about deploying it like, en masse over populations. Yeah, you could, weaponize it quite easily just yeah. show them fucking crazy shit at the same yeah. time what the fuck and psychologically ruin someone yeah sure yeah. Um, could try it with trot it's a very dangerous yeah. give trot like just a couple of times it wouldn't it take really much it won't take much it's surprising it's I'm on the edge anyway much. yeah also like you probably shouldn't mess around with that stuff in, unless you know what you're doing like so you're talking about no, something called the, the heroic dose right yeah. is the thing that like so there's a really good study about this by king's college london where they did it with psilocybin drink a glass but of it's it. the idea of having <laughs> incredibly high doses of um psychoactive material like lsd is one <clears throat> psilocybin is another dmt uh, dmt shit. like but like how they work on the brain is i think they create like a form of like neuroplasticity maybe that's the wrong use of that but like they allow you to like reprogram the inputs and outputs of your brain ultimately. So it puts you into a changeable state. And if you have experiences, if your brain takes you on a place like this that's good, then it may end up creating a, a good experience, a good output for your brain. But if it goes in a bad place and you start to associate things badly, you may. And that's why it's important Psychosis. when you take huge amounts of doses like this to be in an environment like with a psychotherapist or something like that that can help you process things in a good way. I would love to do that. I'd love to try that. It's just, but currently it's just it costs incredible about three just grand the fact that the tiny little square has that power. It's crazy, isn't mm. it? <clears throat> the tiny little square. But it's just, that's you, just purification of drugs. If you had a vial of it, yeah. fuck. It's just like that. the power of it would be just... Yeah, well, you know how much it takes, how much fentanyl it takes to kill somebody? Oh, yeah, a couple of, couple of grains. A couple of grains. That's crazy. So it's just purification of drugs. But like. it's pretty amazing. But it's one of the things where it's just like, if you just, you know, pop mm. a glass in someone's, you know, in a water supply yeah. for a building or something, you can get everyone fucked up. I think Maybe. it's less about I don't the know. Potency. I think that's obviously large volumes of what it might that's dilute, but still. Lot, yeah. You're right. Yeah. I mean, yes, you can use drugs effectively as a weapon. R Ross Ormy discovers fucking Rehypno. It's just amazing. <laughs> it, it is just This is getting monetized. It's just incredible. This is going to get monetized. But yeah. Okay. Well, that's. Well, we won't really delve into the. No. Unless you want some LSD now. 
Yeah, I'll do the three grand thing. We'll get him. You'll do the and we'll three grand. Him. We'll just film him and talk to him for a bit. Hello. Let's see what happens. I feel like my brain will go down a dark path. And then like 24 of worry hours later, and anxiety. Like, well, am I, why am I still feeling things? You know, oh, yeah, that's, I want it to be that's over the annoying thing, now. mate. Yeah, it doesn't really subside. If there for a was long something time. I could drink. It's like okay, I'll, let's let it wear off now. Like you that have, would be really good, actually. If you have if caffeine, you could, if there was just like, a, all right, mm. let me just take this and I'll, I'll be better. Like I'm kind of done with the trip now. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, the biggest complaint I've heard from friends is it just lasts ages. Too long, yeah. And it's just and like and you it, become it, quite you fatigued can't... with do, like just the f- sensation of just like because yeah. immediately like yeah, it's supposed to be quite euphoric and then and then it's shit. Oh yeah. god, it's been you know yeah, fourteen, fifteen hours. Well, imagine experiencing the entire universe. I don't think it's like that though. Well, the, the heroic dose. But, it depends, but then I guess it depends on the heroic dose, yeah. Because it felt like timelines to them. <coughs> yeah. When well, it's like seconds. And I guess it also depends on your surroundings or what you're exposed to at the time and what you're thinking of. Given up. If you've just been through trauma, I don't know if that it would be a good idea to take. No, probably not. No. I think it's a guided uh, experience. Yeah, it's they're powerful, powerful. Let's test it on Craig. Be careful, everybody. But don't tell him. Especially if you're young as well. If you're listening to this, like obviously we're in our thirties now. Like if you're listening to this in your in your late teens or early twenties, like your brain's still not fully formed, and you've got a lot of good to get out of your brain yet. Don't start before you start collapsing it. Before you start (laughs) experimenting on it with drugs, make sure it's fully formed. Otherwise, it can have really bad effects. Um, This is coming from three guys that definitely. Well, I mean, to be honest with you, like I'm really glad I had some friends at school who smoke weed when they were teenagers and there's a lot of evidence now that says that that's really not good for you no. like you know like it can really <clears throat> stunt development alters the development and yeah. like now you know when i got into it i was in my mid-20s and i mid to late 20s really and i feel a lot happier about that because i feel like you know it's it has less of a uh an impact on your brain development so according to science i mean it may it's have already an impact deteriorating on now, yeah so. I, exactly exactly that's the thing i got my juice i got my i got my good years you peaked and now, you know, I'm trying to be kind to it, but at the same time, giving it a little, like, chuck a little bit of kerosene in the fuel tank now and then, you know, just to... Spice things up. Just to get some flames coming out of the exhaust mm. pipe, which they have been after eating all those chilies we ate I'm the not day. once, which yeah. is... Did you have a, yeah, yeah. sore bottom? Uh, quite an We one. did a spicy challenge, um, a uh, hot one mm. style yes. show for... that'll be for Yogg's cast members for soon. Yogg's members. Um, and yeah, I think, well, I'm surprised at how much I could get to before it really hit my I was throat. really surprised how the I last one the tank. bomb where it was Jesus that was like getting maced that was yeah. strong yeah, yeah. I did but yeah no a little bit of it. ring sting yeah I had one ring sting but it wasn't sting. crazy it wasn't as crazy as I expected no, it to be I, suppose. I, I processed it fine mm. all things considered anyway yeah anyway hope you process this fine sorry about the massive tangents and stuff ah. and we went deep but uh, that's what Hat Chat's all about and if you really want to support us and all our endeavors, you can do so on patreon.com slash hatfilms or, you know, on Twitch or YouTube members, mm-hmm. wherever. It all comes back to us and we really appreciate it. So it's your platform of choice, really. And uh, you can all amalgamate uh, at our wonderful community on Discord, discord.gg slash hatfilms. If you want to watch like all the videos that we put out just for our members, yeah. then link your account on Discord and you'll get access to our subscriber only channels where we release all that stuff um we've got some fun stuff coming up like a whole day of streaming and how to stuff day like live that. on the 9th of march 9th of march you just need to be a member or subbed or patreon to and you'll, watch it you'll get a ticket and for that's a 10-hour event stream. yeah so if you're into that god help us all uh yeah yeah we're really just going to discover our limits there yeah in terms of i reckon we could do the just do the tabs then. Just do the tabs. As long as they can right. stream me sleeping for an hour or two. Can we do that? <clears throat> Are you live tent cam? I just Smith set just up goes a tent camping. inside and yeah. uh, put just up in the just corner of the warehouse kip. and I'll just have a sleep and you can occasionally sure. switch to me. Have sure. a little kip, yeah. Well, the, the schedule of events will be released as the month progresses. So mm-hmm. look forward to that and we'll see you next week for more Hat Chat. Yes. Have a fucking good one. Uh, over and out. Bye. Goodbye.